video for you guys. Um, this actually is not the video I intended to make. I have seven videos I need to film today. And I just sat down to film them and I'm all ready and everything. And we went to church this morning and I really was inspired by the message that he was preaching. And I wanted to share with you what he talked about. And basically he was talking about how to keep the Holy Spirit in your, in your life. How to, how to feel the Holy Spirit present in your life. And, you know, he mentioned just like exercise, you know, you can't buy a treadmill and just sit it in your house and never use it and expect to lose weight and get healthier. You have to actually use it every day. You have to make exercise and healthy eating part of your daily routine uh, indefinitely to be able to see progress and results and improvement and things like that. And so just like exercise or anything you're trying to improve upon in your life, you have to make it part of your daily life. And that's basically what he was saying with with God and living with the Holy Spirit inside of you is making it part of your daily life. You should always strive to make God part of your daily life because not only is it going to bring you closer to Him, it's going to be more helpful to you when you have things that pop up in your life that are stressful and and hard to deal with. The closer you are to Jesus and God, the easier those things are going to be. Maybe not in the beginning and you might think you won't make it through those things, but in the end you'll realize how much God really helped you through those situations. And so you know, like exercise, making God part of your daily life. He also had three suggestions for ways that you can do that. Practical tips to just really simple ways to make God and the Holy Spirit part of your life. And the first thing he mentioned was to ask God to bring the Holy Spirit into your life. Luke eleven thirteen says, ask for the Holy Spirit and God will give it to those who ask. So basically, you know, he said before in the Bible too, ask and you shall receive. So the first thing you do, even if you're a child when you need help, is you ask somebody. And so just because you're an adult and just because maybe you're a Christian or you're trying to figure out if you want to become a Christian and how God fits into your life, you have to ask for that help so that God can help you. The second thing is to listen. Isaiah 30, 21 says, be obedient when he speaks. So basically, um, you know, when you ask him to help you, listen for his responses. Sometimes you don't always feel a response and sometimes you do and sometimes you have to wait and sometimes God's response is wait and be patient. And so asking for the help that you you want and then listening for his answer. And the third step is to follow the Holy Spirit. John 10 verse 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And so basically that just means that, you know, we belong to God and we're like his flock and he's supposed to watch us and take care of us. Following him sometimes means doing things that we might or might not feel comfortable with. Sometimes it's a big leap of faith. Sometimes it's a small step. But God will give you strength to do those things that if you are listening to his, um, what you feel he wants you to do, whether that be something that makes you uncomfortable, like, you know, starting your own life group or... Um, talking about God at, with your coworkers or whoever, you know, God will help you through those things if He's the one that's asking you to do them. And I know personally for me, uh, especially lately, I've tried, just like I mentioned with making exercise part of my daily life, uh, which I have done now for over a year, you know, making it a priority. And it's not always easy. There's times when I when I want to I want to exercise or I need to exercise, and I'm like, but the dishes need to be washed and the dishwasher's full and there's laundry to do, but it's going to be there when I get done. And I've had to physically retrain my brain to think this is more important. Exercising to me and being healthy is more important to me than a sink of dirty dishes. So I, I want to start training my brain to think the same way about God. And I have been. I mean, I've, I've been a Christian for years, but I've been really trying to improve and work upon my relationship with God, um, just personally, how I, you know, my relationship with Him, but then also how my, how me having a better relationship with Him improves all the other relationships in my life, whether that be my husband or my kids or my parents or my friends, whatever. The better, the closer I am to God, I have found the closer I'm able to be with the other people in my life that um, my loved ones. So I have been praying every morning before, you know, I'll, either before I get out of bed or right when I get out of my bed in the morning, I go and like, wash my face and all that stuff. I've been praying in the morning, first thing, to pray for patience and productivity and, um, to be kind, use kind words, and especially being a mom, a stay-at-home mom, and a homeschooling mom, I definitely have to pray for patience at least once a day. I mean, it's a daily, hourly thing sometimes that I feel like that I need patience. And I can, I can tell I have noticed a difference on the days when I have forgotten to pray and the days that I have remembered to pray. I feel like, I feel like my days are a lot more in order. I'm a lot um, kinder and more patient and understanding when I have prayed in the morning um, than on the days when I didn't. And I always prayed at night, and that's fine. And I still pray at night and, you know, pray throughout the day. But I think that morning prayer before anything else happens, before we have breakfast, before we do anything, 
if I stop and take that time to pray, I have found that it has helped me a lot. And I'm not perfect. I still lose my patience and I still get irritated and I still get stressed out and I still find myself sometimes getting irritated with my kids or my husband. And so, I mean, it's obviously a work in progress, but that has helped me a lot. And I feel like, you know, kind of like the preacher was saying, those three ways to have the Holy Spirit to, you know, live inside you and be in your heart, um, you know, is really kind of boils down to that for me. Just keeping that communication open with God. You can pray anytime you want, anytime you need it, anytime you, um, you know, in the car while you're waiting in line at the drive through or, you know, whatever. I mean, just the more you talk to God and the more you keep him present in your daily life and notice the presence in your life. Like if you start looking for those miracles and you find those things that happen to you, then you realize the more and more you realize that God is present in your life, the closer you're going to feel to him. And part of being able to do that, at least for me, is praying and staying in touch with God. Like you couldn't have a friend that you never talked to for years and years and years and expect to grow your relationship. I mean, you might be able to pick up where you left off if you meet again or you talk again on the phone. But, you know, you, you've got to cultivate all these relationships in our lives. And our relationship with God should be no different. So this is totally an unplanned video. I hope it, it speaks to you and helps you if you're in a place where you feel like that you want to, whether you're a Christian and you want to continue to grow your relationship with God or you're not a Christian and you're, you're, trying, to figuring out, you're trying to figure out, you know, your faith and all that stuff, you know, just to let you know that that is something that if you don't know where to begin, the first thing to do is to talk to him like a person and ask him to come into your heart and help you and guide you and that you're going to be present enough to hear him when he answers you. And a lot of times everybody struggles with that. Sometimes the answers are really obvious and sometimes they're not. But to pray that you understand when he speaks is a big deal so that we can then move forth and do what he asks us to do. So I hope that was helpful, not too rambly. Um, I got. I will see you guys in the next video, and thanks for watching. Bye.